How have you been holding up this week between the pandemic and everyday life? People have a lot going on in holidays coming. Does it make it any easier? Well, this Thanksgiving, experts say at least 2.1 million Americans will mourn the death of a close relative due to COVID-19. It's Self Care Saturday here on BNC, and tonight I spoke with Bree Overton, a clinical mental health counselor who focuses on dealing with grief, especially at a time like this. Well, Bree Overton, thank you so much for joining us for Self Care Saturday. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. So one of the things that we know right now going into this holiday season is there are so many people, so many families who are dealing with grief at this time. Talk about what they may be experiencing coming up um, going into Thanksgiving. Sure. Well, you know, one of the things that we know is that even before COVID, one in five children um, have experienced the death of a parent before the age of 18. And with COVID and through Thanksgiving, 2.1 million Americans will be mourning the loss of a close relative due to COVID. Um, and so right now we're not able to get together and gather like we typically do. Um, so sometimes there's that isolation, there might be some depression that comes along with that and some sadness. Um, and so what we want to do is be able to to encourage people to connect um, in, in many ways that are possible, connecting through Zoom, um, being able to pick up the phone and, and talk to people. But that isolation and that loneliness is real right now. And so, you know, when you look at um, some of the things that, you know, people, obviously you never expect to lose a loved one, but right. now people are kind of like on edge after experiencing it because of COVID, you know, what are some of the things that they may be kind of feeling on the, the inside and, and just kind of not knowing how to express those thoughts? Yeah. So, you know, grief, grief is, is one of those, it's big. It's an, it encompasses lots and lots of different feelings. Um, there's sadness, there might be anger, there may be moments of frustration and maybe guilt. Um, some of that guilt comes from wanting to feel a certain way, but when I grieve, society tells me that I should do it this way. Um, another way is just being able to connect through those stories. So the organization that I work with, Experience Camps, currently we're running this campaign called TAG, and it's talk about grief. Um, and, and what we want to do is inspire people to connect with others who have experienced the loss, talk about it, share those stories, be able to share along your journey. Um, but being able to connect and being able to really talk about it and talk through it are things that we know that help. And so what are some of the recommendations that you have in terms of just being able to experience self-care at a time like this when you're going through those grief situations? Yeah, yeah self-care. You know, what we know about self-care is that if we're not taking care of ourselves, it's really, really hard for us to take care of other people. Um, so taking care of yourself might look like allowing yourself permission to, to say no, right? Or to say, yes, I want to participate in this way, but thinking about those, those things and in, in, in which ways that I do want to participate and not feeling guilty to do things that you may not want to do. It may look like getting outside of the house and taking a walk. It might look like reading a book. It may look like um, there are these five minutes that I really am just going to devote to myself. I'm really just going to sit and maybe reflect or journal or write or listen to music or whatever that may look like. Um, but I encourage people to always think about what are things that you're doing today to take care of yourself? What is that one thing that you're going to do that is just for you? And if that is standing in the shower for five extra minutes, because that's your alone time and that's your alone space, I encourage you to do that. And what are some of the things that your um, your clients have been telling you about what they've been experiencing? Some of those ones who are actually have lost a loved one to COVID at this point. What have they been saying? Yeah, it's tough. You know, they're saying that it's tough um, being at home and being alone. And a lot of people are working from home now and they're not working in their offices. So you're not being, in, you're not connecting with your colleagues. You're not having those meetings outside of your home. Everything is happening at home. So that social component um, is missing, right? And so being able to talk about how do we connect? How do we stay connected with people? If that is something that we, that we need, if that is something that we're craving. Um, but a lot of people do talk about just the isolation, right? They talk about not being able to connect in ways that they did before. Even when you think about the holidays of, we sometimes have big gatherings and we have lots and lots of people may come over and they may go to their grandma's house or um, to an uncle's house or to an aunt's house and have those huge gatherings 
and now living through COVID and living in this pandemic, we know that those big gatherings are not encouraged. And so how do we still stay connected? How do we still say, I'm here, I love you, I want to be a part of this in a way that is safe for all of us. Um, so, you know, like being able to help people have those conversations um, and doing something that still honors that memory of their person, that that also honors and validates our families and that we're here and our closeness, but still being able to do something that keeps us all safe.